Hello, people. I want to talk about Joe Colombo. Um, Joe Colombo was the head of the Colombo family, and uh, he was uh, shot on June 28, 1971, by Jerome Johnson. And Jerome, Jerome Johnson was basically uh, a thug, a criminal, a rapist. He had a couple rape charges that got dropped uh, very suspiciously, and he committed other crimes. This is before the shooting, and uh, he had a camera. The guy never knew nothing about cameras, and he was at the, um, uh, the Italian American Civil Rights uh, League. They, they basically had a parade that day. It was a, a rally, and um, he shot Clumbo in the face and head three times. And for the next seven years, Clumbo, uh, Joe Clumbo, uh, was paralyzed and can barely understand things. He lived, believe it or not, after being shot several times in the head, he lived for almost seven more years. But there were a lot of suspects here. And to this day, nobody really knows why the, order, uh, the shooting was ordered. All they know is Jerome Johnson did the shooting. And... Uh, He'd be the last guy that you would expect. This is Jerome Johnson right here. Now, they could never question him because right after he shot Joe Clumbo, the bodyguards of Joe Clumbo just happened to be there right next to him, and they killed him. He had a camera that he was holding up, and he was filming Joe Clumbo. And he had a camera. He had a gun next to the camera, and as soon as he got close enough to Joe Clumbo, he shot him. He literally got close enough to him, past the bodyguards and everything. But people thought it was Joe Gallo that ordered the shooting. And let me explain to you why. Okay, now Joe Gallo had just gotten out of prison. And let me just show you a picture of Joe Gallo here, uh, which most people know Joe Gallo. He was killed in front of um, Umberto's uh, clam house. This is Joe Gallo up here in the corner. That's where he was eventually killed eight months after this shooting. And here's another picture of Joe Gallo. So people thought Joey Gallo shot him. And here's why. When Joey Gallo got out of prison, he wanted $100,000. Basically, he wanted to be paid to leave Clumbo alone. Clumbo only offered him $1,000. And that's like a total smack in the face. So at that point, Joe Clumbo went to war with him. And things started happening in the streets. And then it started escalating. But because of the uh, Italian Defense League, what happened is a lot of publicity started coming uh, toward the mafia. But to believe it or not, the Italian Defense League actually started creating power because The Godfather was being shot, the movie, and Joe Colombo basically met with the, with the people making The Godfather. At that time, the book was called Wise Guys. And uh, he got the word mafia taken out, uh, other things that disparage... Uh, Italians. So that got thrown at it. So that part of the Defense League worked. But there was also a lot of money coming into the Defense League. And at the time he was killed, there was almost 100,000 people that were literally members of the Italian Defense League donating money. And that's a whole thing. That's a, that's a show in itself, what happened to that money uh, right after Joe uh, was, um, Columbo was shot. Okay, so Columbo shot. They killed the shooter, Jerome Johnson. So the police go and they investigate. They think Joe Gallo did it. So they sit down with Joe Gallo and ask him about the shooting. Joe Gallo goes, I have an alibi. I don't know who did this. So they, they believed him, walked away and said, oh, they decided that Jerome Johnson did the shooting on his own. So Jerome Johnson just decided one day he was going to go to the Italian uh, American Civil Rights uh prayed, shoot Joe, uh, shoot Clumbo, just for the heck of it. But here's the thing. He had already had a couple tickets to go to Jamaica. So he was planning on doing the shooting and getting away. And uh, things that happened, too, that were strange is the fact that he was committing crimes up to this point, serious crimes, two rapes. And uh, both times he, he did no time. He literally went in and got out. That sounds like the government. I mean, the mafia doesn't have the power to get him out on charges like that. So here it is. This is another thing. But then 
there's also something else. Uh, there were, was another incident. And uh, in this other incident, Joe Colombo spit in the face of Carlo Gambino because Carlo Gambino was arguing with him about the Italian Civil Rights League. He said it brought too much pressure on the mafia and he was becoming too big, too powerful. So what he did is uh, they were arguing. He spit in Carlo Gambino's face. So here you got Jerome Johnson doing the shooting. You have either Joey Gallo, who was screwed basically out of a lot of money because he went to prison. Uh, he got out and he thought he was going to be given money after he got out, basically to use for his own crew and stuff. But he was insulted with a thousand dollars instead of the hundred thousand dollars he was expecting to receive from Columbo. So Columbo was kind of a prick, but you got to remember, Columbo was a tough guy. Columbo uh, was hired uh, basically during. Uh, the Profaci Wars, they tried to kill the commission and stuff. And uh, Columbo was going to be part of the hit on the commission. But Joe Columbo went and snitched out the Profacis and told uh, the commission what was going to happen. So his reward was they break up the Profaci family and give him the family. And that's how they became the Columbos. So Joe Columbo has the family, but as soon as he gets the family, he's defying the bosses on the commission that gave him the family, you know, especially with this Italian defense league. And he, uh, another reason he started this Italian defense league was because Joe Colombo's son got arrested for uh, something minor. It was like uh, uh, he was melting uh, gold and turning him into nuggets or something. And he wound up getting charged, but he eventually beat that charge. So the Italian Fence League was not just a useless league that wasn't doing its job. It was actually doing quite well uh, because at the Godfather movie, it basically told the Godfathers, you're not going to disparage us, uh, the, the people making the movie. And uh, they were doing other things. But there was a lot of jealousy going on. And more than anything, it had a lot to do with the money, the dues and everything that people felt like Joe Colombo wasn't kicking back. It was like a, he was developing a huge union. <laughs> And receiving all this money. So after he got shot, eventually Gallo, Joey Gallo, died in front of Umberto's clam house eight months later. And uh, Jerome uh, Williams was dead. I'm sorry, Jerome Johnson was dead. So it became one of those uh, big mysteries. Listen, there's a lot of mysteries when it comes to people being murdered. Uh, by mafia members. Uh, it always has been. People disappear, people murder, anything. But this whole thing with Gallo was very strange because of the fact that, first of all, no one expected him to live. He got, he got shot three, four times in the head, and he lived for another seven years. But all the players involved, except Carlo Gambino, who, tough old man, outlived everybody, he could have been one of the people that ordered the shooting. So to this day, nobody knows who did the shooting. It makes you wonder, you know, and uh, I'll give you an example. Like when this uh, defense league was uh, uh, was um, started being built by Joe Colombo, they boycotted Alcott Seltzer, the Ford uh, Motor Company for disparaging Italians. And, and uh, they even got the attorney general at that time, John Mitchell, to have the government stop using the word mafia. So the, the defense league was really doing a good job, but a lot of jealousy was going on. So, you know, Joe Gallo at a young age uh, dies. Clumbo lives for seven years. He shot down at a young age. Jerome, uh, Jerome Johnson was only in his early 20s. So you had all the two young mafia guys gone, useless after that. You had the wars break out now between the Gallows because everybody thinks the Gallows murdered. Uh, they And a lot of the Gallows saying, hey, we didn't do this. So was this the clever mind of Carlo Gambino that actually put this whole thing together? He wanted to get uh, Columbo out of the way because Columbo spit in his face and was defying him. Nobody knows that. Was it Joe Gallo? Was it... Joey Gallo not getting his money. 
that is like that's the main thing that people say that's what happened but the strangest thing is how this was all set up and how jerome johnson was murdered not murdered well he was yeah he was murdered he was gunned down by the bodyguards he had no money he never jerome johnson never cared about cameras never did he use a camera to shoot anything so basically what it comes down to if you really think about it, was it Gambino or was it the government? Who really had this Jerome Johnson there to commit this murder? Well, I'm sorry, not murder, shooting. But you could say murder because the guy was useless after that. He was paralyzed, couldn't talk to nobody. He could barely uh, barely give signals. Um, he was pretty much uh, turned into an invalid at that point after the shooting. Uh so that's the big mystery. Who did it? Why they did it? We know we know who did it, but we don't know who why he did it. You know, Jerome Johnson lives and gets arrested there. He could probably sit down and say, "Who did it? Who who, who put him up to it?" It's like a Lee Harvey Oswald shooting uh, Kennedy, and they just happened. You know, Oswald died the following day after Kennedy was shot. Jerome Johnson died within minutes after shooting uh, Clumbo in the head. And up to this point, Jerome Johnson was a very violent man. I mean, he was raping women in Greenwich Village. And he did other things. And he was young, violent. Uh, so what do you guys think? What do you, who, who do you guys think murdered Joe Clumbo. Everybody thinks the simple answer is Joey Gallo, but when you really think about it, it doesn't make sense. Jo sure, Joey Gallo had a reason to do it, but then when he's questioned by the feds and the feds clear his name, were they all in on it? Was the feds in on it with Gallo? Did Gallo set it up that way? Did when Gallo, when Joey Gallo went to prison, he became friends with a lot of powerful black gangsters and drug dealers, and that's who he hung out with. As uh, a matter of fact, the day he was assassinated, he was with, with a, a very powerful black person, uh, a gangster. Um, but everybody died within an eight-month period that was involved in that, you know, or if they didn't die, they were invalid like Clumbo, so they weren't able to say anything. But Gambino lived quite, you know, uh, a lot longer can be lived. And uh, I guess we'll never know. And I just wanted to give you guys that story and you tell me what you think. Um, and also, I'm going to be doing a live show tomorrow. And, and it's going to be with Danny Trio. And we did an a, a interview. That I interviewed him a couple of days ago and a lot of people watched it. It was uh, one of my longest running uh run times of people watching a video people liked it a lot so i would like to know uh you know if people were going to be there tomorrow i'm sorry i would like to see people there tomorrow it's going to be uh three o'clock eastern time and we're going to um talk about mob stuff and danny and i are going to be working together on other stuff and other projects you know just call it a couple older guys uh shooting the shit and we're looking forward to doing this. Uh, our aim is to give you guys great content. And as for, there's other stuff happening here too. And we're, we still have people doxing people. Uh, but I'm going to try to stay away from the drama of stuff because of uh, that's what people want. You know, people have kept saying that this show is going to be dead, that my show is dying, my numbers are better than they've been. Uh, you know. Shows are getting really good numbers. And uh, it's not true. This show's stronger than ever at this point. And now bringing Danny in, we're trying to go in a different direction. Uh, our goal is to be mob stuff only and stay away from the drama. And yes, I know I'm guilty of some of the drama. There's no doubt. There'll be a little drama discussed every time, like when people are doxing people, giving out people's uh, date of births, where they lived. That's rat stuff. That's what rats do. And the person that I'm talking about knows who they are and so do other people. 
I'm trying to keep that down and not make it too ugly. Uh, so it's up to them at this point what they want to do, but I'm going to put the shows that I want to put out. I'm going to talk about who I want to talk about. This is the mafia genre. It doesn't matter who is part of that genre. If they are uh, worth talking about, that's who we will be talking about. And you guys love the show that we just did. So someone wants to hear the things that we talk about. Right behind me, look at that, Al Capone. No John Gotti. There's an Al Capone behind me, though. Um, and uh, the reason I have these behind me is I'm uh, building my studio up here, making it into a real, as professional studio as I can do. And uh, just want to make it as nice as I can do, I can do it, put better sound into my videos and uh, give you good quality work there, too. So please come see our interview tomorrow. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not interview. We're, we're just going to, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a show tomorrow at three o'clock and we're going to let the audience, basically the people in the chat room, ask the questions. If you come in, you're respectful. We're going to ask you, answer your questions. And they're going to have to be mafia stuff. No, none of this drama crap going on. We're not going to answer any drama questions or anything. We're going to answer mafia questions that people want. We're here for that. And that's what we're going to be. So if you want to ask us something, uh, Danny Trio is full of knowledge about so much stuff with the mob. I mean, he was literally in the street with the Columbos. As you know, he did 20 years in prison for uh, robbery and murder. He's a serious guy. Very serious guys and knows a lot of serious people. And he can give us insight that most people in this genre cannot give us. He's the real deal. So we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Please, you know, hit that reminder that we're going to be here tomorrow on Friday. And Danny and I will see you at 3 o'clock Eastern, and we're looking forward to it. Everybody take care. Please hit that like button. Uh, most of all, uh, please uh, subscribe. Uh, over the last two weeks, subscribership has started going up again, thank goodness, because it stalled out. It wasn't going down, but it stalled out. But now we're starting to get more subs back. And uh, and we're just about ready to hit um, 3,500. And we'll take it from there. But I have a good feeling that uh, Danny and I working together is going to do a lot for this channel. Okay, everybody, you take care. Hit the like button, like I said. And also, please subscribe if you're not subscribed. A lot of good stuff coming. And to go to mobtubers.com. We have a lot of stuff there on the blog. Now we're doing neighborhoods, too. We just did uh, Mulberry Street, uh, we, uh, we wrote about, and The Mob, uh, Bensonhurst, um, Howard Beach, and a lot of uh, mafia stories. Okay, everybody, take care. I appreciate you watching us. Have a nice one.